Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. Um, so lovely to see you all. Uh, thank you for coming to our second uh, Dorset Council Facebook Live. Um, my name's Councillor Laura Beddo and I'm the Cabinet Member for Culture, Communities and Customer Services. I'm joined this evening by Dave Levi, who is one of our brilliant um, recycling officers. Um, just a quick bit about why we do these Facebook Live sessions. So over last summer, um, I went with the comms team uh, to various different towns in Dorset with my tiny little Ikea sofa and we sat on it and we just chatted to people and it went really really well but some people couldn't come along for whatever reason um, and some people said can you do some online stuff too so we said yeah of course we can uh, we did a question and answer Facebook live on um, the budget with uh, Spence Flower, leader of the council, and Aidan Dunn, who's the money chap. Um, I hope, I think it went really well. We've got really good feedback. So tonight, we wanted to talk to you about uh, waste and recycling, um, keeping Dorset looking lovely, which we try really, really hard to do. Um, some of you lovely people have submitted some questions in advance, which is brilliant, and I've got those. Um, but the way this works is if you just type your um, comments, your questions, anything you want to know um, into the comment section, then we'll bring it up on the screen and we'll chat through, um, we'll chat through what you want to know, basically. Um, so Dave, you are a recycling officer and you do loads of kind of engagement stuff. Do you want to just sort of tell us a bit about the outreach and engagement stuff that you do, like with schools and community groups and, and things like that? Okay. Um, oh, thank you for that. Um, as a recycling officer, we well, we recover all of Dorset. There's five of us in the team, um, <clears throat> and we we do everything from talks to WIs and community groups to uh, school visits. So we're right in the middle of school visits at the moment, um, where we're doing a, a food waste competition. So we're we're going in and and encouraging students to to waste less food. Um, and uh, part of that competition is uh, they're they're doing a pledge card that they can take home, put it on their fridge, um, and they're coming up with posters. Um, oh, brilliant! To help them to um, cut down on on how much food they're they're wasting. Okay, uh, fantastic. I was going to say some, some of the other work that we're doing is uh, communal improvements. We're going out into the public to um, communal blocks uh, or flats and making improvements to the recycling and waste facilities that are there. To encourage people obviously to, to recycle more and waste less that's great and so i mean i guess it's it's really good because um you know going to schools they go home and they tell their parents what to do <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's just my kids um but that's a great way of kind of spreading the you know the recycling message so um okay brilliant so anybody wants to drop any comments into the chat please do um anything to do with recycling um waste keeping dorset clean um litter free anything like that just stick it in i'm gonna um go with a couple of questions that we've had um submitted to us first um and i think it probably be um interesting and good to to look at the elephant in the room um and the elephant in the room hey mark thank you you have literally just i couldn't have um i couldn't have uh, paid you to put that question in why are the roads in dorset so dirty that's the elephant in the room that's what I wanted to start off with. Now, it's not a positive thing. Um, nobody likes it. And what we want to do at the moment is sort of try to try to look at this uh, holistically, right? So we know that in spring we do a cut of the verges. We, you know, it, it, it's often windy. It's, so we get unsecured loads. Um, so stuff flies off lorries and all sorts. Um, and then we've got the behavioural issue, which is people just chucking stuff out of their car windows. Um, it is a pet hate of mine. It's really difficult because we have some brilliant volunteer groups, but they can't go out on the main roads. Any road that's got a speed limit over 30 miles an hour, we can't let volunteers out. And we've also got to um, look at some of the roads we have to close, some of the roads we have to do overnight. Our teams have to volunteer to go and, and do that work because it's in addition to their... Um, their sort of day jobs, if you like. Um, in some cases, we we do get contractors in to do it. Um, it costs a lot of money, and I think 
for us at the council, it's quite difficult because you see the road absolutely pristine and beautiful. And we spent a lot of money getting a contractor in to do it. And a couple of days later, it started to creep back in again. So a huge amount of that is behaviour change. And I know that the team have, have given me some statistics. We have, um, we're one of the first councils that we can prosecute people for throwing stuff from their cars using dash cam footage. Um, and we've prosecuted so far 29 people. We've issued fixed penalty notices to 29 people. Um, and that's £150. So the word does start to get out um, and we won't hesitate um, if we can get the evidence, you know, we, we will issue those fixed penalty notices. Um, we also, with fly tipping, and these are quite incredible, I think, these statistics, um, we have issued uh, 1,230 enforcement actions, which has included 114 fixed penalty fines and 17 court prosecutions for fly tipping. That's how seriously we take it. And I think the appeal to you guys out there driving around, some of you with dash cams, is if you see anything and you catch any footage, let us know. We want to crack down on this. Um, you know, we, we we really do. It costs us a fortune. It's demoralising for the crews when they go and do the picking and then next couple of days it's just back again. And it's demoralising for people like Dave who work so hard on the recycling. And we've got some brilliant, brilliant people at the council, absolutely brilliant people who are scientists and who are working on our recycling rates. And Dorset's doing really well. But then we see the roadside littering and we just think, oh, come on. So it is a huge behavioural change piece. Just to head off a possible couple of sort of um, upcoming questions. The Upton Bypass we're going to do in the next couple of weeks, Camford Bottom and Lake Gates to Roundhouse Roundabout. Uh, Camford Bottom was done last night, uh, the other's going to get done tonight. Later in the week we're doing Matchins Lane and Horton Road and this week we are doing the Ridgeway and Weymouth Relief Road and I think some of the, they're some of the main offenders that people might be worried about. So hopefully, we've started off on a slightly negative note, but hopefully that's been a bit reassuring. Um, so if we move on maybe to some kind of recycling questions, and I've got a great one um, here, and it's from uh, Carol. Um, and Carol wants to know, do you think we'll ever be able to recycle polystyrene at the curbside at any point? And at this moment, I'm going to throw across to you, Dave, um, for your opinion on polystyrene. I think not. Am yeah. I right? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and why is that? Because we want to try and recycle as much as possible and people are, you know, frustrated and they, they want to do their bit. Um, is it just one of those materials that's just too difficult? Uh, it, it's part of, part of that, but also too, there isn't as much polystyrene around as, as there used to be. And, okay. and a lot of the, look at the packaging and what's in there, you find a lot fewer items are carrying with polystyrene. Um, it, it takes up a lot of space. Yeah. Um, if you're trying to, to get rid of it, um, but it's it's not something that that I can see us picking up at, at the curbside. But hopefully, it's going to get phased out, right? I mean, I know if I order stuff, you know, increasingly, it's, already, it's, already heading that way. it's it definitely has been heading that way over the over the last couple of years. Okay. Well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, it will carry on heading that way um, and leave us with the stuff that that we can recycle. Um, what else have we got? Oh, this is good. Ed. Um, Ed wants to know if we can lobby um, the government to introduce a fully comprehensive deposit return scheme. Uh, so like supermarkets in Europe that have machines that take empty bottles and cans in return for a voucher. Um, I think I think they are. I don't think we have to lobby for this. Am I right? It's, uh, um, I think it's been delayed and not actually being introduced until 2025. Okay, in, but it, okay, but it is going to happen. Is in the workings, yes. Yeah, definitely in, in the workings. Okay, and I suppose there's a, a, a variety of ways that that could, you know, pan out. Um, and, and it's difficult because quite a lot of that we actually recycle at the curbside. So it'd probably be quite nice if, if we continued lobbying the government for, um, you know, I don't know, like Tetra Pak carton recycling because at the moment we can't do that. So I guess we need to sort of say thank you that's great <laughs> and now move on to the next bit of lobbying that we have to do i guess that's you know 
Um, but it's good news that it's happening. So thank you, Ed. That was a great question. Um, oh, Mark. Oh, no. Hang on. Um, it's no coincidence the bypasses are all close to fast food. Yeah, it's not coincidence. Um, actually, just yesterday, um, Dave and I went over to Sherburn to meet the first winner of um, the Litter Lotto. Um, and we'll be doing a bit of comms around that. But basically, it's an app. Um, you take a photo of yourself, put in your litter in a bin, and that gives you one entry into a monthly lottery. That is backed by McDonald's, essentially, because they recognise that they're a huge part of the problem. Um, so we we have got to sort of come at it from all angles, really. Um, but that's a really that's a really good question. Um, Louise, where do I take textiles? Oh, oh, Dave. OK, textiles. I've got duvet covers. They're not good enough for a charity shop. Where do I take them? Um, you probably got to look locally for a textiles bank. Okay. Um, depends on where where Louise lives, um, but in some of these supermarket car parks or, or local council car parks, you'll find textile banks um, where where you can place items, not only good clothing but also two things that 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 have holes that you know don't really want that can then be used okay. for uh, filling for um, pillows and those kind of things. Okay, Rags brilliant. And, and they so, can go to the HRC as well. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you can take them to the tip. I'm not allowed to call it the tip. It's the household recycling centre, but everyone still calls it the tip. Sorry. Um, so you can take them to the HRC and you can take them to a clothing bank. So I hope that's helpful. Um, Barry, great question around behaviour change um, towards litter. Action, not words. Um, part of that is the litter lotto. Part of that is prosecuting people. And part of that is our comms campaign. Um, our Promise to Love Dorset, which encouraged our visitors to come, have a great time, but not leave stuff everywhere. Um, that actually won some communications awards. Um, so hats off to the comms team, because we want people, you know, to, to feel like they're part of something. So they don't want to ruin our countryside. And coming from somebody who um, grew up in Lowell's Cove, we had all the problems with litter on Durdle Door Beach coming out of lockdown. And it, and it was completely heartbreaking. So you're absolutely right. Um, we, we are on it from behavioural change. Um, Ken, this is one for you, I think. Uh, mixed packaging, like the foil used for crisp packets. That's a good one. Um, hang on, crisp packets. Where do they go? You can wash them out, can't you, and take them to some supermarkets. But I don't think we do them at the curbside yet. Um, I'm, I'm looking well, at I know we do. Stuff groups are collecting the materials and they're going through something called uh, tetra tetra cycle where, okay. where they take them back so basically you'd have to wait till you got a stack of them and then yes. find your nearest tetra cycle group yeah and drop them off at a drop off i mean i know my local co-op's got one so um if you go to tetra cycle and have a look at that it's not something Sorry. Huh? <laughs> my fault. Uh, TerraCycle is actually TerraCycle. That's because we were talking about Tetra Packs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you go to TerraCycle, can I have a look at that? Because it's not something we do at the moment, um, but it's something I, we'd love to do it. You know, um, we've got ambitions to kind of um, to do to do loads of stuff. And actually, um, I've just seen I've got a lurking expert. Um, who's lurking behind the scenes and feeding me information because astonishingly I don't know everything um, I, I thought I did um, but apparently we are going to set up a Dorset Council collections with TerraCycle um, and we are going to be introducing plastic films and flexible plastics um, at the curbside soon and that's something that the government's asked us to introduce and we you know, we talk to the government all the time. We do roundtable discussions and we feed in because Dorset's actually really good at this stuff. Um, so plastic films and flexibles at the curbside. Keep a watch out for that. And then your crisp packets to TerraCycle um, at, at the moment. So those reforms will need to be in place by March 2027 for collecting stuff like soft plastic at the curbside. So I hope that's helpful. Um, Litter free Dorset have great campaigns um, to look at disposing of rubbish responsibly, and also you will have a womble near you um, at some sort of community litter picking group. Um, sometimes they're called the Wombles, um, ours was called Lowell's Litter Scouts, and I go litter picking all the time, it's horribly satisfying. Um, let's have a quick oh, this is a good one. Um, 
Dave, have a go at this one. How clean should cans and glass be? We don't want to waste water and energy heating the water to overclean it, but we don't want it rejected if it's not clean enough. That's a brilliant idea. Okay. Um, originally, we asked that you just rinse the cans out. Okay. okay. We were talking about them being spotless. Um, if you think back to when a lot of the materials were being sorted um, by the actual crew on the vehicles at one time, they, yeah. there was, you know, you get mold mold spores and things in there and and it's more a hygienic point from from the guys that are collecting um so it doesn't have to be absolutely spotless uh, it's just just you know do, do the best you can to get it clean okay so like if for example i've i don't know i've used a jar of pasta sauce and it, it, you know there's quite a lot left in there if i've got a sink of water and i just wash it in there left over yes. from the washing up that's good that's enough. fine that's fine yeah um, that's perfect. That's actually really helpful because quite a few people have asked me that lately, actually. Um, ooh, um, Luke. Hi, Luke. Um, dog fouling. Yeah, that is a real issue. Um, zero enforcement of the PSPO. I'll be really honest with you. Um, I would need some of my ASB teams here to go right down into the detail of that question. I'm happy to pick that with you um, up with you offline. Um, but equally... Um, it is a horrible, horrible, horrible issue. And um, we're looking at behaviour change campaigns. We're looking at, you know, we've put stickers on the bin saying you can put your dog waste in here. It doesn't have to be a dog waste bin. All of those things. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to pick that up with you in more detail with, with the antisocial behaviour teams as well. Um, oh, Ken's back. Hi, Ken. Uh, toothpaste tubes. <laughs> Aluminium food paste tubes, plastic lids. Uh Ooh, toothpaste tubes. I'm ashamed to admit I don't know about that. Can they go in the recycling or do they have to go in the bin? No, I don't think those are yeah. going to go in the bin. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the plastic lids can go in the recycling. Um, plastic lids would be fine. I'm, I'm yeah. not sure about the actual. Because you know, they've the got tube. a coating in, on the inside, haven't yeah. they? It's materials. TerraCycle uh, again. It looks looks like Ali. The Al. Al Alley tubes will be included with the government re reform scheme. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Some is full and flexibles. So watch this space, basically. Yes. And yeah. if you've got plastic lids on the bottles and jars, then stick them in um, with the lids on. Um, so 2027 and 2027 seems to be the magic year for a lot of these things. 2027, to yeah. The pressure's really <laughs> on, which is a good thing. Um, toothpaste tubes to TerraCycle. Um, and then aluminium tubes going to be included with the government reforms. So basically, it's a kind of keep doing what we're doing until 2027. And then it's, you know, there, there's going to be a lot coming in. Um, so I've got, got just jumped in and said boots actually take toothpaste tubes. Oh, do they? I didn't know that. <laughs> it's really difficult, isn't it? Because like, if you're like me and you live quite rurally, um, you could end up with 400 different containers in your kitchen, all with one or two things in in it and then end up going to boots and then going to the cop to drop your crisps off and then to the hrc to do something else and you kind of think am i is is that the right balance so the more we can do at the curbside and at hrc's i guess the better because it reduces that you know dotting around um let's have a quick look jenny hello jenny um environmental green issues as volunteers you want to visit the recycling centre? Yes, please do. Yes, that would be wonderful. Um, no problem. So I'm going to take the comment off. Um, where does it all go? Okay. So the first thing is, yes, drop us a DM um, or drop me a message or an email. We can sort out a, a, a visit. Absolutely. That'd be great. Um, we love showing people around. We're really proud of what we do. So, um, you know, Dave, Dave and his team are out doing outreach and talking to basically anyone that will have them. Um, <laughs> that's, that's kind of fair, isn't it? But if you want, you know, if you're a community group that's involved with litter picking, then, yeah, we can arrange that. Um, this is a really helpful link here. Uh, do, 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 do. There it is. Where yeah. waste goes. That gives you a pretty comprehensive breakdown. I mean, Dave, do you want to give us like a a really rapid fire sort of overview about where stuff goes? I know that our food waste goes to Piddlington. You're taking my favourite and easy one. You, you, Go, 
Take it. Take it away from me. Um, we've got glass is going to South Wales. Okay. Um, and then your, your mixed recycling is going to North Wales. Um, garden waste is West Parley and Stour Payne. Um, like you've already said, our, our food waste is going to an anaerobic, anaerobic digestion plant in Piddle Hinton. And any black bag rubbish, um, it looks like it's going to a biological plant near Wimborne. So that's New Earth, isn't it? So yeah. it goes there yeah. and then it gets picked again. And then some of the black bin waste actually goes to... Um, refuse derived fuel rfd yep rfd oh yeah yeah so um i i didn't even know what that was um but basically we we don't send tons of stuff overseas to landfill we 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 get everything we can from what you put in your recycling and in your bins as, as close to home as we can that's kind yeah, of the very little right? going to landfill there, there's very little very um, little so, yeah okay i mean that's brilliant um because you know that's something that we can be really proud of and i think that's why you know again i said this in the last q a um uh, it's kind of you know sleepy little dorset rural dorset you know um but actually we're punching above our weight nationally we we do really well in terms of recycling don't we um yeah which which is really really good um do, 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 do. another Ah, Jane. Hello, Jane. Jane's a counsellor. Um, old cooking utensils, metal ones and pots and pans. Where can I dispose of those? If they're decent, give them to me. You know what I like? I'll have a... <laughs> I'll knit round, Jane. The handle fell off my best saucepan the other day. Um, no, seriously, um, you can take them to the HRC. Um, but also a really good tip, and I am, and actually I know this because my little nephew is is two years old. Um, go to your local preschool and ask if they've got a mud kitchen. Mm. Um, you know, and all the kids can just muck around with them. Um, oh, she says they're not very good. Oh, okay, um, all right. In that case, take them to the HRC. Um, and if they're not like got holes in or they're dangerous, ask a preschool um, or or a primary school because they generally, you know, they love all of that kind of stuff. Um, oh, this is a good one. Dave, medication packets. Uh, medication packets. So this is yeah. another one that's falling under TerraCycle. Now, I, okay. I, if you, I'm going to say check locally, but I, I know someplace like Superdrug in, in town in okay. Dorchester, they have an actual res, receptacle for medical um, packets, which is yeah. recy being recycled through TerraCycle. Okay. So I, Depending on where you live, I, I would check locally and see if there's something set up where, where you can actually um, recycle those. Okay, brilliant. And But if there isn't, then you go to TerraCycle. So basically, um, basically for, for the really gnarly, tricky things, it, at the moment, it's TerraCycle. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully that was helpful, Sue. Um, do, 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 do. Ah. Volunteer, is that you, Marie? Hello, hello, Volunteer Centre Dorset. Um, do we sell green waste compost? We need some for our community allotments. Um, we do, but I'm not sure of the process of going about it. So that's the um, that's the anaerobic digestion that Dave talked about before. And anaerobic, I, I sound so thick, but science was not my my best at school. Um, that means without oxygen. So it's basically all mashed without oxygen. And that pro does produce a compost. Um, it's like an um, eco-composting. Thank you. Yep. So my yep. my um, my amazing lurking team have have put have messaged me and said, we've got a contractor, they're called eco-composting, and they sell it. So um, but I can pick that up with you um, offline as well um so so that's good um blamford carers will take pots and pans thanks ken that's really really helpful um to do, 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 do right how are, how are we getting on um ken says it's missing 90 percent. i think that's just you missing the conversation i think it might be your link ken i hope everyone else can um can see the live stream and hear hear the live stream um okay um i think that's okay brilliant ah louise thanks pill packets can be taken to Superdrug in dorch that's really helpful 
And then, of course, you've got your terror cycle. Right, let's go back to a couple of questions that I think we got in on. Ooh, this is a good one. Catherine, uh, where can I recycle rigid plastics like Tupperware? Um, Dave, rigid plastic, so garden furniture, Tupperware. Um, oh, that, that's a bit of a difficult one, really. Um, that's your HRCs at... Oh, big HRCs, isn't it? Bridport. Yeah. Rigid plastics, such as garden furniture, uh, is collected separately at Portland HRC and Bridport HRC. Okay. Um, from there, it goes to a reprocess or it's made into pellets as feedstock for new um, plastic products. Okay. Lots of space. Other HRCs prohibit us from, from separating those items out. So some of the HRCs, like um, uh, down the in, in Dorchester, it, it's it's a very small site, so they obviously don't have the space to to hold things like rigid plastics. Yeah, um, and I think that's you know that's something that we want to work on, where we look at you know our HRC provision across the county, across, across the Dorset council area. You know, we we really want to make our HRCs sort of useful places where we can really do. Um, a lot of community stuff. I mean, I I get quite a lot of my furniture from the tip um, in the re. I do in the reuse um, area because it's you know it's great. Um, it keeps it out of um, keeps it out of the rubbish. And actually, my husband won't now let me go to the HRC with any of our um, stuff. He has to take it because I come back with more than I go. With. <laughs> so um, that's fine. Um, Where's okay, Paul? Uh, do you or can you process dog waste? I think that's a no. No, not that I know of. That just goes straight in the bin. Um, because that's a just a hygiene type risk. So I don't think we can, I don't think we can do anything useful with it. If that's the question, dog waste is processed with street litter. Yeah, so it goes into your black. Black bag waste. Um, plant. Yeah. Um, the biological treatment plant. Okay. So it's just same as same as black bag waste, really. It's it's contaminated, so we it goes to the MBT plant. Yeah. Um, okay, thank you all. Um, let's have a look. Oh, thanks, Luke. That's really helpful. Um uh, advice there. Um, I'm just going to see if we've got any more questions online. Ah, this is a good one. Leah. Um, Leah would like to know, can provision be made for collecting plastic bags with the household recycling? Now, I think this comes under what we were talking about before by March 2027, the soft plastic, the soft films. Is that, is that about right? Um, so that would be curbside so that would be going out with your normal recycling but just not yet is that that's, that's... Yeah, well yep that's we're getting it's the same march 2027 okay. um, that they're, they're looking at the the provisions being made as part of the curbside collection okay um, so it says the, the, some of this will cause challenges for some councils like ours that mix recycling together in a bin as the technology right. just picked out the plastic film doesn't exist um ah. so, so so yeah. there's a bit of work to be done there yeah yeah it's, and yeah. where where our plastic is currently going to be separated out um plastic bags and film would end up getting caught in the machinery oh i see okay problem so that's where they'd have to look at a different way of of actually separating the materials if you're going to put that in with the curbside sort that's Okay, so that would be an example of the government deciding that local councils should do something without perhaps asking us or really thinking it through. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I, I suppose it, it's a bit of looking at because there's so many different collection, you know, services and things. Is is giving the council the opportunity to look at it and see whether yeah. or not they can implement it. Okay, that makes sense. And of course, you know, that there, there, there's been some talk about basically saying all councils have to recycle the same way and. And of course, we know that just doesn't work. We, you know, we we know our areas and we we do it our way. And actually, Dorset recycles over sixty percent, so we're doing really well. Um, I think part, that's... part of what we're talking about is bringing in, you know, five things across across the the, the country that can be recycled anywhere you go. Mm -hmm. And and one of the big ones that people are looking at is going to be food waste. Now yes. we don't 
problem with that because we're already collecting food waste. But there are some councils who aren't collecting food waste. So okay. they would have to look at introducing that as part of the part of their scheme. Yeah. Um, they're still deciding on what those those five items are going to be. Okay. But we definitely food waste would probably be one of them. Um, yeah. So some of that, if we, I mean, it, yeah, it's not going to pose a particular problem for Dorset, but yeah. it, you know, we if yeah. we were having a conversation in a different county, they'd be kind of going, oh, <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Um, so plastic bags really good as well. You can you can take them to supermarkets if you're going into the supermarket. It's much easier to keep them all together. Um, and and that's oh that's a good one. Um, jumping ahead, Mark, do you have any plans for coffee pod recycling? Now, coffee pods they are really really interesting. And I must admit that I am a complete coffee fiend, and nothing happens in the Beddo household until Laura has had her third coffee of the day. Um, but we don't have a pod machine, um, so. I think that's probably another one for TerraCycle. It is. It is TerraCycle. And then also, too, a lot of the producers have um, sort of take-back schemes. Oh, so, right. So you can return it to them. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't see that being something that we would look at, at trying to recycle. Okay. And it's worth mentioning, though, as well, which is what we do, um, because I've got uh, indestructible um, metal uh, cafetiere. We've tried loads of different machines, but I've break them all. Um, so we, I've got one of those plungy coffee pots um, and we just put all the grounds in our own compost in the garden. Um, mm. It's really good for that. So, you know, um, but, they, but the coffee pod machines do make a nice cup of coffee, don't they? <laughs> um, uh, right. Uh, Graham. Graham Carr Jones. Hello. What's your brilliant domestic cooking oil recycling like they do in Spain idea? Right. Why can't we recycle cooking oil? Do you know, Dave? Uh, I'm pretty sure you can take it to the household recycling centers. The HRCs take it. Okay, the HRCs that, take it. Brilliant. Forward. So it can be recycled. But I think what Graham's yeah. on about is um, he sent me a he sent me a photo of this when he was on his holly bobs, and it was literally like a a bottle of cooking oil, and they pick it up curbside. Um, and oh, apparently we've done a, a pilot for curbside used cooking oil in Swanage. Um, we'll have to catch up with that. Graham, let's take that line with the results of what happened in Swanage, because that is really interesting. But then, of course, in Spain, they take all their rubbish down to a skip at the end of the road. So they don't have, you know, it's it, it's a balance, isn't it? Um, but that is a that is a really good point. Um, coffee grounds. Sorry, Dave. Start to run into it is you can only collect so many things on a vehicle. Yeah, and we've already had someone asking about coffee pods. We're having someone asking about cooking oil, um, and and you you've got to look at you know the environmental damage of some of these things. You know when we look at what we're actually collecting. So for example, once again, food waste. Food waste if it goes into landfill or or if it goes into to black sacks, uh, it creates methane, which is, which is definitely more damaging to the planet than say you know uh, coffee pods. Do you okay. know what I mean? It, it, look at it that way, and we we can only collect so many things o on a vehicle or you're going to be putting out loads and loads of different pots and bits and pieces at, at the curbside. Um, so and more vehicles, all... essentially. Yes. Yeah. yeah, trying to figure out how to, to, to do these things. So it's all it's all about a balance, really. Um, I, I think, we, you know, we're, we're trying, um, we're trying really hard to do as much as we can with the resources that we've got um, and yeah. doing really well. But, it, you know, we can, everyone can always do more. Um, this is a really good one. Um, and my lurking expert, Gemma, has just exploded on the message going, this is the bane of our lives <laughs> because there is no outlet for single use vape recycling yet. Um, it's a national issue. Um, it's being looked at nationally, but it does really, you know, go back to, to, to the producer's responsibility. Um, it's, it's a relatively new thing as well. So, you know, we, we haven't sort of nationally quite caught up with that. So it's, um, it's well done, Shirley, for highlighting it because it is a, um, a, a problem. And also, don't forget that vapes have batteries. Yep. And batteries in bins are bad. Why are batteries in bins bad, Dave? Um, well, if anyone remembers, well, about a year ago, we had a vehicle fire in Crook Hill we in did. the depot. 
okay um you know those we, we've had others well someone's put down it just cause causes fires it does yeah so don't put batteries don't put batteries in your bin that's really 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 important um let's have a quick look next question can we mandate biodegradable zip ties we can't mandate anything um uh, i'm not quite sure why zip ties particularly um i guess they could be um biodegradable um a lot of the problems are that some of the biodegradable stuff that says it's biodegradable is but only if you wait 300 years um so biodegradable in itself is not a catch-all <laughs> um this is a really good one what percentage of our council rates goes towards street and highway litter as it is such an important problem how is it used do councillors think it's enough well um the first, I thought the first, out, of, out of the council rates, if, if we're paying, let's say, 154 pounds out of your council rates is going to waste recycling and street cleansing. A year. So, a year. Yeah. So the, each most, household. They bill comes through and they think, oh, my goodness, look at what I'm paying. Yeah. And, and it must be going to to these things. And, and we're only a very small percentage of that. So, um, so you know, it's, it's quite good value for, for your bins yes. being collected every Definitely. week. And yeah. Um, how is it used? It's used towards our HRCs. It's used for your household curbside collection. Um, it's used um, for everything that we've talked about, really. Street bins being emptied, street cleansing. Do we think? Do we think it's enough? I'm not sure anything is ever enough. Um, we could spend more money on pretty much everything we do, but we have always got it in our heads as councillors that it's not our money; it's yours. Mm. Um, you pay your council tax well so do i because i live here <laughs> but you know it is council taxpayers money so we have to try to get it to a balance where it goes to all the services that people need and a huge amount of that is adult social care hopefully as you get your council tax bills you'll get a leaflet in with it and that gives a bit of a breakdown of where your council tax is spent i did some work on that with our lovely comms people um so i, I got mine this week and it is really really clear and it does give you an indication of this sort of stuff so I, th I think that'd be helpful. Have, have a look at that as well. Um, let's have a look. Uh, aluminium foil, hi, Cindy. That's a 2027 thing again, I think, isn't it, Dave? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's still being decided. Um, I mean, okay. in the meantime, in in most of our car parks, uh, you'll find uh, big round yellow alley foil bins. Where you, oh, you yeah. The, yeah. The big. Yep. Okay. Yeah. We check locally definitely the hrc you can take it um and so some of the supermarket car parks will have them as well uh, that's cool i think i'm kind of getting the feeling that in um you know in four years time we're going to be doing lots more facebook lives <laughs> about <laughs> about all the new stuff that's um that's going to come in really helpful link on the screen at the moment um folks about how we spend council tax not just um on the kind of waste and recycling stuff um but on um on, on the wider you know breakdown of council tax spend as well um i've got a question here graham about the road sweeper um highways do um require sweeping prevention is always better than cure um we don't want blocked gullies and we don't want leaves everywhere blocking up drains and things like that um it's a really good point um so ray bryan who is the cabinet member for highways and i are doing a piece of work at the moment called Hedge to Hedge. And it's about working out what happens from that hedge to that hedge and how we get it all in line. So for example, um, we know that if we're doing some highways work, we try and litter pick at the same time. It's that kind of sensible stuff, but we want to roll it out across sweeping um, and, and uh, you know, anything. And if you see a problem that you think there's a blocked gully or a, a gully that might become blocked and you think you need to sweep out to your area, you can always report it online on the, on the Dorset website um, and, and we can then, our teams can look at that and, and react accordingly. Um, so I hope that's helpful. Um, so I've got a question from Bob. Why don't we use prisoners and people on community service orders to pick up litter? I think that's a health and safety thing. I don't think, you know, we can actually ask you know we can't we can't make anybody go and litter pick and certainly 
above the 30 mile an hour, you know, we wouldn't want anybody out putting themselves at risk. The community groups that litter pick around towns and villages, absolutely brilliant. Um, and they're, they're worth their weight in gold. But um, the operatives that go out, they get specialist training. Um, so, so it's a great question, but, uh, but, but we can't. Um, let's have a look. What else have we got? Um, I've got one more um, on here. This is a great question, and it's not a plant either. Um, from Jane, what is the single top thing that residents could do to make running waste services easier and help save money? One thing that right stuff in the right bin. Right stuff, right bin. <laughs> right stuff in the right bin. Yeah. Okay. And when you go out and do like um, talks and stuff um, with community groups, do we sort of, because I know that I've done a couple of talks with like primary schools and I've given them little um, pencils that are made out of recycled denim and things like that. Um, and they love it and they go home and they talk to their parents and they kind of, you know, that's helpful. Thank you. Whoever's put that link up. It wasn't me. Um, but that is really helpful. But do we, how do we encourage people? How do we, so I know you said about communal flats and we've got bags, haven't we, that we can give to people that maybe don't have a huge amount of space in their kitchen. So what's some of the stuff that we can provide to make it easier for people to uh, put stuff in the right bin? Good, easy place to start is, is the link that you put up there, right stuff in the right bin. It, okay. it, it's a link, it's, it's more pictorial than it is actually words. So you can actually see the bins and what should be going into to each one of the bins that, that, that a standard property would have. Okay. Uh, and you, you know, if if you're not sure about something, then we say leave it out. Okay, it, it's okay. better to leave it out and then to, to question and stick it in, and then have your your bin end up not being collected. Yeah. Okay. Um. And okay. It, you know, I mean, they can always ask. They they we're we're all we're available o online. Um. And and you know, people can always just say, look, I'm not sure about something. Um. We did tr a trial at one time called the Not Sure Box, where we were actually okay. placing out and things that people weren't sure about was going into the box and then we were going around and actually giving feedback based on what was in in the box um so you know we're, we're looking at different ways that we can we can engage with the public and also give them the correct information for what should be going in in um their bins that's great and and actually um i remember um it wasn't me it was definitely my husband put something in the wrong bin and we got a shouty sticker put on the bin <laughs> Um, it was <laughs> friendly reminder, not shouty yeah, sticker. It was, sorry, it's a friendly behavioral change nudge. Um, I called it a shouty sticker, but actually, it was quite helpful because you know, then you think, oh, okay, maybe, yeah, um, maybe not. And okay, right stuff, right bin. That's it. Um, to do, how do we persuade people not to drop cigarette stubs? Mm, exactly. Uh, um, Lydia, Lydia's done a lot of work. Based Let's around free Dorset. Uh, free Dorset have done, definitely done a lot of a lot of work around that. Um, you, you know, and they've encouraged um, in some of the towns you'll see like sort of metal recycling bin your butt type things yeah. uh, on the wall. Um, they've also done things where they've they've almost had like a voting ballot. You know. Oh yeah, I've seen those. And you put your cigarette butts in to 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 vote on on something that that's popular at the time. Um, it, it's it's about behavioral change um but it's also about giving people the the right equipment to to try and do something with their cigarette butts other than putting them in in well dropping them or throwing them out of a, out of a car window yeah um, exactly and let's fruit also also had those little pouches that were sort of yes. insulated and so you could actually stub your cigarette out mm -hmm. inside those and i know that um you know, live well, Dorset. Quick plug for live well, Dorset. If you're um, struggling and you want to give up smoking, um, live well, Dorset can help you. And I know that public health do a huge amount just to try and stop people smoking in the first place. Um, but if you do, it, again, it's back to that behavioural change, isn't it? Um, really, um, really important. Uh, Simon, Simon, hi. Details of a deposit return scheme. Yeah, we've sort of already covered that a bit earlier. Um, I don't know if you've joined us. So deposit return schemes um, could be rolled out by uh, October 2025. Yep. Yeah. Um, and oh, there we go, Chris, lady after my own heart. Does it include wine bottles? I will be quids in if it does. Um, 
<laughs> you are encouraging the wrong behavior. It, uh... No, sorry, sorry. No, this is the correct behavior to recycle, but obviously drink in moderation, people. Um, safe safe uh, consumption of alcohol is um, critical. Um, is. Okay. So uh, the return scheme will not include glass. So unfortunately, you're going to have to have to find something else to do with those. It's plastic drink bottles and cans. Okay, you can get wine in cans now. That's fine. <laughs> I've, it's, it's it's really interesting actually because my friend Sarah is doing a lot of work on sustainability within the drinks industry um, as a sort of side, um, and and actually a lot of producers, uh, particularly like gin and vodka, are switching to refillable and cans and things like that, um, which I just find quite interesting. It's um it's uh not particularly relevant to this discussion but i you know it, it is just in, interesting that whole industries are waking up to this and doing their part and i suppose as a council it's it's up to us to do ours mm. really um so i haven't got any more comments coming through and i covered most of what we had um pre in um I mean, Dave, is there any sort of, is there anything that we haven't covered that you think you'd like to get across to people? Or is it just that, you know, if you've, if you've got a group and you want Dave or anybody else to come out, we'll, we'll come out and we'll chat all things recycling. Oh, hang on. It's back. I don't know why that's back. Um, oh, actually, there we go. Um, Emily. Um, some local residents regularly don't get their bins collected due to parked car. Is there any way to get proof of the parked car so that residents can be certain it is a parked car? So um, that's a really interesting question and really, really um, frustrating for local residents. What we do is when people email in and say they've had a miscollection and, it, um, and they find out from our data that it was due to um, a parked car, um, I think that does that does really frustrate people and it frustrates our crew. I mean, I I did my um, loader training and I went out on a, um, a bin round just before Christmas. Um, and when you're actually on the ground doing the work and it's quite hard work um, and you can't get to areas and you know that you're not going to complete around because of something being parked somewhere it is really frustrating because all our all our folks that are out on the sort of front lines really want to do a good job and they you know they all really care about our customers and some of the people that i was out with were kind of going oh you know that lady there she's actually really really unwell so we go around the back and get her bin for her and you know they know they know their patch um so i think we can approach um car owners if we've got a particular road where it's a repeat offender if it's a one-off i mean you know that's that's annoying but it is what it is um we have a statutory duty to pick up waste so if there's a road where it's a problem we'll send a letter out to the whole road so that's a that's a great um question we don't necessarily take photos while the crews are out and about but if we get reports that it's a problem road we'll write to them um, and we'll go out and say, actually, hang on, this is this is sort of really unhelpful. Um, so we do take action. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, that's a great question to which I do not know the answer. Dave, I don't know. Do you know the answer? Which is more polluting in our watercourses, tobacco or vapes? Oh, um, no, I really don't know. Vapes. <laughs> Possibly because vapes have batteries in them. Yeah. Um, oh, I've got someone saying vapes as well due to the batteries. Um, okay. Yeah. There's other chemicals in there as well. It, neither one of them are great. They really, they really, should, <laughs> yeah. they really shouldn't be going there, and that's why we try and encourage people to do the right thing with both tobacco products and and vapes as well. Um, yeah. You know, any, anything that's going in into into natural water courses is going to do some sort of damage because it's not supposed to be in there. Yeah. And it's a really good point about the vapes, isn't it? People thinking maybe they're helping them to give up smoking, although of course a lot of younger people are just taking up vaping, which is a public yeah. health issue all by itself. Um, and maybe thinking they're doing the right thing, but actually it's, it's um, you know, it, that is quite difficult. Um, Sarah, you've got a question about bins that are regularly missed. If that is an issue, can you drop me an email? 
um, my all my details are on the uh, Dorset Council website and or, or comment on send us a direct message and we'll pick that up because if that is a repeat problem then it shouldn't be and we need to work it out and, and work out why um because i have had a couple of instances where that has happened and we've been able to you know um go and just sort out the problem whether it's a staffing problem or a map problem or whatever it is but we need to know about it so can you send us a dm um barry thank you that's a great session yay positive feedback um really difficult because people that discard litter from cars probably aren't joining us on a facebook live session to talk about how brilliant dorset is about recycling um but that's where sadly the prosecutions come in and we issue the fines but um we need the evidence from dash cam footage so if you can get it to us um you know that's uh, david i don't know if you've got anything to add but we just give us the evidence because we, we we are trying as well so people don't have to worry about you know it coming back onto them if they send it into us then okay. you know um our, our enforcement teams can actually look for the vehicle and process process it that way so that's one of the things we wanted to get across to people with dash cam footage especially with things like litter um, okay that it's it's not going to come back on them okay i think that's re reassuring especially i don't know you might be in a small community might even sort of think you might yeah. know the person or whatever so that's yeah well, okay so tell us because we're serious we we want to issue the fines we want to put people off doing this seriously um so that's that's the message um right i am going to oh thank you that's lovely thank you i'm going to finish on ken um till receipts oh nope they're recyclable um used to be that the inks were not uh the paper industry didn't like the inks that tills used this is my lurking expert has just told me this um but now it's okay so you can put them in the recycling in the paper recycling uh, <laughs> someone said that was years ago years ago i don't know i've never thought about that that's a great question um i i haven't got a, a, a clue um all right go on go on go on one last one um for a time, the Tetra Pak banks and car parks also took coffee cups. Now the signs have changed, not mentioning coffee cups. Can we still put them in? Dave, yes. can we? Yeah? Yes, I'm saying yeah. yes. Okay. We think so. <laughs> I thought we changed it and actually said that they, you could accept them. That the, what, the banks in car parks? Um, no, that's only the non-compostable ones can go in. Okay, so compostable goes in the compost, presumably. Mm. Coffee cups are a problem. Get a reusable one. I know it's not always possible. And if you need the caffeine fix, I, I hear you. Um, but get a, get a reusable coffee cup and then you don't have to worry about it. Um, so it's, um, yeah, um, I, I, I don't go anywhere without mine <laughs> I mean, some shops at one time were taking them back as well, weren't they? They, we, they, they were. were. Where you could you could place them out in front of the the, the shops, or they That's were encouraging right. you to come back to them for another another cup of coffee by bringing your old coffee cup back to them. That's right. Um, and some places sorry. you get like twenty five p off if you use a reusable one. So, so yeah, the coffee cups can go into Tetra Pak, but far and away is to say no to a paper receipt. Grab your reusable coffee cup grab your reusable water bottle and then you're set and you don't have to worry about it um and it is a habit thing it really is a behavioral change and that's what dave's team are, are all about aren't you just kind of going let's let's think differently about we how we use this stuff um so okay i think we need to wrap it up there because i need to go and feed my son who is probably starving <laughs> <laughs> um there's another brilliant session thank you so much dave um and lurking expert Gemma, um for um helping us out with the real tricky ones um i hope it's been useful i hope everybody's enjoyed um the session um thanks very much great session oh that's lovely thank you um we'll be doing another facebook live sofa session um in due course probably gonna look no dave you're, you don't have to it's okay <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry, Love thinking out loud. Be a superstar, Dave. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think maybe, you know, um, we might look at some children's social care. We might look at adult social care. Um, if you've got any ideas, let us know. Send us a message. Um, what would you like us to talk about? Because I can get people in from all over the council um, and we can come um, directly from my sofa to your sofa and uh, talk at you for an hour and take your questions. So um, thanks ever so much. Um, I think we're going to stop the live stream and um, Dave can go back to his day job of encouraging people to recycle properly. And don't forget to let us know if you'd like a visit from our teams. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.